Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way on this channel we talk books and today I am bringing you a book haul for the month of May. Um, I've got a few books to show you. Um, roughly about half of them are brand new and half of them are either thrifted or free. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share those with you now. Um, please have a look down in the comments if you like uh, every time I record a, bo uh, a book, every time I record a video about um, books, I list every single book that I'm talking about down in the description. So if you are listening and you're like, oh, what was the name of that book? They're always there in the description. So please feel free to have a look down there. All right, let's start with, here's, here's the plan. I'm going to start with new and then secondhand. And within the new category, I'm going to start with nonfiction, move into fiction, and then we'll move over to the bargains. So uh, let's start with a book uh, that was written by <laughs> uh, Connections, Connections. There's actually two books in here that uh, I've uh, purchased due to a connection that I have to the person. It's And it's like a step removed in both situations, which is really weird. So I work with a guy whose wife wrote a book, and this is the book. Um, the book is called Memories and Elephants, The Art of Casual Racism by Megan Catrack Harris. Um, so this is a book uh, about um, Megan's experiences of racism. Now, she uh, grew up in a big, and so she says here on the back here, so this is its essays, um, so it draws on her experiences of being a teenage mother, a member of a large multicultural family, a social worker and an academic. Um, so she, this is a, a personal narrative. So this is all about things that have happened to her. And her intention in writing this book was to illuminate often uncomfortable aspects of our society, the elephants in the room that have been historically downplayed and ignored. So um, I'm really looking forward to this. It's a really thin book, so it won't take me too long to read. Its call number is 305.8. For those of you who are uh, joining in with our nonfiction reading challenge this year, I'll link to it down in the description if you'd like to join us, um, where we are reading um, nonfiction books based on their Dewey number. So if you are looking for a book for the 300s, this could be the one. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to that one. Um, the next nonfiction book I have is also a memoir, and it is Fern Brady's memoir called St Strong Female Character. Um, the call number for this one is 792.7028092, a nice long one. Um, so Fern Brady is a comedian, and this is her memoir. Uh, in it, she, so she has a summary on the back of the book that says, number one, I am diagnosed with autism 20 years after telling a doctor I had it. Number two, uh, my terrible Catholic childhood. Number three, friendship. my friendship with an elderly man who runs the corner shop and is definitely not trying to groom me. Number four, homelessness. Number five, stripping. Six, more stripping but with more nervous breakdowns. Seven, I hate everyone at Edinburgh Uni, <laughs> etc. Number eight, redacted as too spicy. Number nine, after everyone tells me I don't look autistic, I try to cure my autism and get addicted to Xanax. Number 10, redacted as too embarrassing. So um, this should be um, a book. I'm really looking forward to reading this book because I just um, find I love Fern Brady's comedy, um, but I also just think she's going to have some really interesting things to say and also um, some, you know, having seen her interview, uh, post writing this book I I know some of the content that's going to be in here and I think it's going to be um, hard hitting but also written in her wry style um, so I think it's going to be really interesting so can't wait to get to this one so that's the non-fiction um, then we move into the fiction just getting in just today it's the la I'm recording this on the very last day of uh, of the month of May and literally this book turned up on my doorstep this morning and it is a uh, classic Under Milk Wood the definitive edition by Dylan Thomas. I studied this book obviously not this particular edition but this um, is it a play it's a play I think or is um, I a radio play perhaps it was in initially intended 
Uh, it's been such a long time. Anyway, I studied this at school and I remember really, really loving it. And just recently, I've been thinking how I would really like to reread it because I think I would get so much more out of it as an adult. So I purchased myself a copy and it arrived today. So here it is. Also, this is such a cute edition. Um, I just remember the characters being really well drawn and um, really interesting. So I'm, I'll be interested to see if I still have that opinion uh, reading it as an adult as opposed to a teenage child. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, let's move on to some more non, uh, sorry, fiction, not non-fiction. Um, I picked up a copy of A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lin. I mean, the cover of this book is absolutely stunning. Um, I have heard a few people talking about um, this book, but more so in hauling it as opposed to reviewing it. So I really don't know um, too much about what this is about. Um, but just the, the cover just draws you in. <laughs> um, so let's have let's discover together, shall we, what this book is about. For Ning, the only thing worse than losing her mother is knowing that it is her own fault. She was the one who unknowingly brewed the poison tea that killed her mother, the poison tea that now threatens to also take her sister, Shu. When Ning hears of a competition to find the kingdom's greatest Shenongshi masters of the ancient and magical art of tea making, she travels to the imperial city to compete. The winner will receive a favour from the princess, which may be Ning's only chance to save her sister's life. But between the backstabbing competitors, the bloody court politics, and a mysterious and handsome boy with a shocking secret, Ning might actually be the one in more danger. So... It sounds really interesting, but um, yeah, the cover, I just can't get over how gorgeous the cover of this book is. Well done to the artist um, who created this cover. Just beautiful. Uh, then we come to the second book that is a book I have a connection with. This is a real, a bit of a convoluted one. <laughs> um, so my cousin uh, was telling me about this book um, because it is written by her stepmother's sister so not someone that's related to me i've never met this person before in my life but um it's repentance by alison gibbs um and this book when i read the synopsis of it i was like yeah this sounds up my alley so um i will definitely get myself a copy it says it's the summer of 1976 and the winds of change are blowing through the community of repentance on the edge of the great divining range the old families farmed cattle and cut timber but the new settlers the hippies have a different perspective on the natural order and humankind's place in the scheme of things. Soon everything will be disturbed. Either the old growth is coming down or the loggers have to be stopped. And although not everyone agrees on tactics, no one will escape being drawn into the coming confrontation. So this is all about small town, uh, old ways meet new ways. And it just sounded really good. So I decided to get myself a copy. So I will let you know once I actually get around to reading it. It's always the way with these things, isn't it? I can't even tell you like how long sometimes it is between the haul and the reading, but we hopefully get there in the end. <laughs> um, okay, this one is The Bookbinders of Jericho. Um, this one is one I've had my eye on. Pip Williams wrote one of my favourite books, which is mentioned here on the cover, The Dictionary of Lost Words, um, This that which was a five-star read for me. My mum read this and she said it was really, really good. Um, so I decided to get myself a copy when I saw one at a good price. Um, so here it is. We love a bit of gold foil on this channel and there is the gorgeous gold foil. Um, so yeah, this one uh, is set in wartime. So it's 1914. Uh, it says, when the war draws the young men of Britain away to fight, it is the women who must keep the nation running. Two of those women are Peggy and Maud, twin sisters who work in the bindery at Oxford University Press in Jericho. Peggy is intelligent, ambitious, and dreams of going to Oxford University, but for most of her life she has been told her job is to bind the books, not read them. Maud, meanwhile, wants nothing more than what she has. She is extraordinary but vulnerable. Peggy needs to watch over her. When refugees arrive from the devastated cities of Belgium, it sends ripples through the community and through the sisters' lives. Peggy begins to see the possibility of another future where she can use her intellect and not just her hands. But as war and illness reshape her world, it is love and the responsibility that comes with it that threatens to hold her back. Sounds like it's going to be a hard hitter, uh, but I'm here for it. And again, 
gorgeous covers well done to these cover designers they're doing such a good job these days um another book that i and this is the last of the new books um that i picked up uh when i was visiting where was i oh this was i was visiting the west of new south wales so i happened to be in mudgee um and i popped into the bookshop there the independent bookshop that's there and i saw this one and decided to bring it home with me so it is i didn't steal it i bought it just to be clear um <laughs> it is girl in a pink dress by kylie needham um so this one uh yeah, so the bookshop's called The Book Nest in Mudgee. Um, recommend popping in. They had a lovely selection um, when I was there. Uh, so it says, Is it possible for one relationship to survive two ambitious artists? Far away from the glittering lights and famous personalities of the Sydney art world she once knew, Frances now lives in a quiet life in a remote mountain town pursuing her art. When an invitation arrives from a former lover to attend his painting exhibition at a celebrated gallery, Frances is plunged back into the past when a single act changed the course of her life. Told across two time periods, Girl in a Pink Dress is a sharp-eyed and compelling story about love and art, about sacrifice and ambition, and the often damaging relationship between artist and muse. Um, so this definitely sounds up my alley and also, again, just gorgeous covers. We love it. We love it. Okay, let's have a look at the bargains. I'm going to start off with one that I picked up just the other day for free. Um, it's not exactly a little free library. It's a so there's a shopping kind of centery thing nearby to where I live, not too far away. Um, and we go there because there's an Aldi, and it's our sort of one of our closer Aldis. Um, so we were popping into Aldi, and uh, my husband and I we had a look at this kind of bookshelf that they have there it's like an open bookshelf you can bring books you can take books blah 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 it works like a little free library only it's bigger because it's a bunch of shelves anyway the first thing that i see as i move to the to the shelf is this <laughs> it's the house in the cerulean sea uh, by T.J. Clune, which is a book that so i've been wanting to read for a long time um that everybody talks about everybody loves um, you know, I it's supposed to be really cozy, uh, found family, all that sort of thing. Um, and I, it's sort of the kind of thing that I really, really want to read. And I got it for free. I was so excited. And it's in pretty good condition. Um, yeah, like um, I would say just about new condition. So I was really pleased with that. Very exciting find. There was nothing else that was worth taking, but that one was there and I was really excited. <laughs> um then i can't even remember where i got these two actually no i can i was um having a look at some these were from little free libraries also so i got two more books here from little free libraries and then i've got two that i picked up secondhand book shopping um so the first one is this one um a short history of tractors in ukrainian a novel by marina leviki levika levika I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, this sounded really interesting to me. So uh, essentially it's about um, a, a recently widowed 80, how old is he? 84 year old man um, falls in love with a 36 year old glamorous blonde Ukrainian divorcee. Um, <laughs> and it, this is told, I believe, from the perspective of his children and how they kind of like have to um you know because he wants to marry this woman and then it's sort of like how does this change their lives and you know yeah it just sounded really really interesting like a like an interesting sort of story um so yeah i picked that one up for free very exciting and the other one that i got for free from a little free library was a maggie o'farrell the Distance Between Us. I don't know anything about this book, but I know Hamnet won the Women's Prize in 2020, I want to say. Maybe 2021? 2020. It feels right. <laughs> um, I haven't read it, uh, but I own it. And I also own uh, her more recent one that's currently long-listed, short-listed for the Women's Prize this year. Uh, the name of which escapes me, The Marriage Portrait. Um, so I own those two books and I saw this one and I was like, well, uh, you know, I'll grab it. <laughs> it's for free. Um, but I genuinely don't know anything about the story here. 
Uh, so let's have a look and discover together. On a cold February afternoon, Stella sees a man walking towards her on a London pavement. She hasn't seen his face for many years, but she instantly recognises him or thinks she does. At exactly the same moment on the other side of the world, Jake is realising that the crowd around him celebrating Chinese New Year is about to turn dangerous. They know nothing of one another's existence, but both Stella and Jake flee their lives, Jake in search of a place so remote it doesn't appear on a map, and Stella for a destination in Scotland, the significance of which only her sister Nina will understand. The Distance Between Us is a novel about parallel lives, displaced identities, the bond between sisters, and the undertow of the past. Above all, it's a love story about two people who have never met. Gripping, insightful, and deft, it's, it is Maggie O'Farrell's finest achievement to date. When did this come out? 2004. So this is quite an old one. There you go. So uh, Maggie O'Farrell, The Distance Between Us. Uh, and the last two books are books that I picked up while secondhand shopping. Um, one of them is a book that I believe was also long listed for the Women's Prize this year called Burnham Wood by Eleanor Caton. Uh, I literally got this for three dollars. It was so cheap. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, one that's a current read. Basically, somebody's bought this, maybe read it, and then they've passed it on. So anyway, very exciting. I'm pretty sure this only came out. Yeah, 2023. Brand new. Um, so was very excited to find this one. Uh, I really don't know what this one's about either. It says, it was over, she thought, she should leave. There was only one road out of Thorndyke, which meant that he knew the direction she had taken. And even if he hadn't seen her bicycle, he had certainly seen her pannier. Is that the, like, the saddlebag that goes on a bike? Anyway, that's it. I'll look it up myself later. <laughs> he knew her alias, her business, her intentions, and he had known more than what she'd told him. He had known she hadn't taken any pictures with her camera. He had known she'd been on the property four hours, and somehow, somehow, he had known her name. Intriguing. Hmm. Uh, so that's that one. And then the last one that I picked up at a secondhand shop um, is called Pollock Confidential, a graphic novel. Um, so this is about Jackson Pollock, the um, artist. Uh, New York, 1949. The art world is ablaze with the pioneering brilliance of Jackson Pollock's action painting. Despite his seismic creative output, Pollock's demons are never far away. This graphic novel chronicles the turbulent life of an art icon and reveals the intriguing relationship between Pollock's painting and the covert activities of the Cold War. Very interesting. So that was that. Uh, so that is my book haul uh, for the month of May. How many is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve books. Um, so yeah, very exciting uh, <laughs> uh, to to be bringing these books into my collection and into my orbit in terms of my TBR and. Um, thinking about what I'm going to be reading next. I know I'm definitely going to be getting to the Bookbinder of Jericho this year. I say definitely. I'm hoping to get to the Bookbinder of Jericho this year, partly because my mum's read it and I want to talk to her about it because I like talking books with my mum, but uh, also because I have ordered the audio book on my library app on Libby, um, so I would like to be able to read it when it comes in because I know that if I don't it has a long wait list so I'll be waiting a while before I can get it again so I'm hoping to get to that one pretty soon I don't really know when I'm gonna get to the other ones I have a plan to read strong female character by Fern Brady um, in the relatively near future but whether I actually do that or not I don't know if I'm gonna get to it or not I will try I always will try um so yeah that's my plan we'll see if it comes off <laughs> all right guys thanks so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video um please feel free to like subscribe chat down below i'd love to hear if you've read any of these books please let me know if i should be prioritizing any of them in my tbr i've already told you the two that i'm already kind of planning on but if you think these ones, any of these ones I need to get to sooner, then please do let me know. Um, I'd love to chat to you down in the comments. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.